So you may have seen the pictures of this car in our dyno previously in the last couple of weeks as we've uh, repaired it from the previous owner's work. The current owner brought it to us to give it a big birthday. It's had lots of minor modifications which he wasn't um, immediately aware of. And what we're going to do now in this video is summarise some of the things that have been modified. So you got a bit of a guide of what you need to do should you use this as a guide for your own personal modifications on your Mitsubishi Rally Art. So let's just have a look at the things of the car. And you've got to remember the Rally Art um, is effectively an Evo engine detuned. There are internal modifications on that engine which is different to an Evo but primarily it's got different intake, it's got different intercooler, it's got different turbo, and the chassis is way different to the Evo model car as well. And we'll talk about that on a separate video. But let's just summarize what this engine has got and what we can diagnose as a result of the custom tuning on the dyno, because um, you'll see this dyno graph, which I've got in my hand, but we'll drop it in this video so we can discuss it now. You can see the huge increase of the dark blue line on the left hand side which is torque and at around 3,400 rpm it starts flatlining because that's the uh, peak boost that we want to run in this particular engine anything higher than that you start bending rods that's an internal limitation of the um, Evo engine and you can see the torque map goes flat all the way to 5,200 rpm so that's the dark blue line but if you look at the dark green line that's the power and that's measured on the right hand side of the graph and that significantly just continues to rise all the way to 6300 rpm now you can see the squiggly lines in the middle the light blue and the light green line that's the original power and torque that the car came in at before we when we put it on the dyno so it's a pretty good example of the massive increase in performance um, i'm not going to talk about the workshop that did the tune i'm not going to talk about the boost control that's in the car but it's a good example of where if you've really got someone who knows how to tune the car properly, you can really get the most reliable and best performance out of it because the boost control system, which was aftermarket on this car, we don't understand why. It did have a flash tune by another workshop, but for some reason we can only assume that workshop didn't know how to tune the boost control to the factory ECU. The previous owner was then sold a aftermarket boost controller, but unfortunately the boost controller wasn't set up either. You can see the wavy graph of the original power run is all over the place because the settings for boost control wasn't um, correctly implemented on that original installation. The good thing is now we've able, the car's got a lot of good parts on it, so you can see by evidence of the dyno graph, it's now got a good result. So let's just have a look at the mechanical parts that have been done on the car. And what you've got to remember, the Rally Art typically um, has the big difference between the Rally Art and the Evo models. The Evo factory standard has the battery in the boot. Now, interestingly, the previous owner of this car has moved the battery to the boot to modify the air intake to run an Evo 10 turbo, but, and then they had a custom pipe here. Now, similar on our XC power kit, which you'll see on this particular dyno graph, we'll drop that in now, and the document you can download off the graph. If you modify these parts correctly, you don't actually have to move the battery to the boot and you don't have to run a, an Evo, Evo 10 air box. You can actually run the Mitsubishi Rally Art air box, keep the battery in the original factory location and modify this intake here with some very simple modifications to match up to the Evo 10 turbo. But right down here under the back, under this heat shield, is an Evo 10 turbo. We confirm that by pulling the heat shield off and have a look at it. It's got complete turbo back exhaust. It's got a modified front man intercooler, and we'll talk about that in a sec. It's got the hard pipe kit. Pretty common modification doing hard pipes on some of these models, but interestingly, it actually doesn't translate to any difference in power or throttle response. We did a lot of testing on that on my original Evo 10 many years ago. Now, down the front here, you can see right inside here, it's got an aftermarket front man intercooler. What I can't show you is the fact that when it was fitted, it was jammed in so tight against the front of the air conditioning assembly, it's actually started to wear the back of the intercooler and wear a slot in the front side of the air conditioning assembly or the cooler. And what we've done is we pulled the whole front bar off, spaced the intercooler further forward, and then put it all back together so there's no continuation of that risk of damage. And some of the intercooler pipes were badly damaged as well through rubbing and wear and tear. So when you're fitting aftermarket parts, Make sure you look at the, at the way they move and sit and when the engine is operating. We see a lot of cars come in with aftermarket intercooler kits and things like that and the silicon hoses have almost 
worn through because they've been rubbing on something. We had a car in the other day, which was a good example of that. So you can see down the bottom here, um, the throttle body on this particular engine, unlike the earlier model Evos, is at the front because the, the intake on this particular engine is at the front. That's the electronic throttle. And down there you can see underneath the blower valve is the silicon intake that connects to the other side of the modified frontman intercooler. It's got a GFB fully adjustable blow valve. And of course, inside here, it's got a k and air filter, which is just a good way of saving money because you never have to replace them and just clean them. There's not a limitation on this particular level of modifications to have to put an aftermarket modified air intake. The factory standard air box, whether it's an Evo 10 or Rally Art model, will flow enough air without restricting the performance of the engine. So there you have it, um, really good upgrade. This particular car, the guy's gonna pick it up today and have a huge smile on his face. And of course, you can get a similar upgrade with our XC power kit, which is effectively a lot of these parts without the hassle of moving the battery to the boot. And of course, it comes with a warranty as well. For more technical information, you can go to mrttuned.com.au or of course go to our main website, mrtperformance.com.au. Of course, remember, we can do custom performance tunes anywhere in Australia near, near where you live through our partner network. Just contact us so we can help you with that. And of course, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And I really hope this car has given you a good example of what you can achieve reliably with the Mitsubishi Realia. Bye for now.